Right, everybody, it's the top of the hour. Thank you for joining us. It's time to get started. Good day to you, and to get us all in the mood, here is some genuine applause. We'd like to applause you for joining us and say to you, welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's Go Global IDT Online, building global brands online for you. Today's agenda, as we're looking at it, it's an action-packed agenda, and it's the Go Global webinar series that continues and we thank you for joining us from wherever you may be. We see you across, and I'm looking at the list of attendees. Those of you in America, good morning to you, good day. And those of you in Europe, it's a good afternoon, and even it's a good evening. So also, we want to say good day to those of you who are actually tuning into this webinar on demand. Our Go Global webinar series does get recorded, and they are made available on demand to you so that you can tune in whenever you want. So wherever you are, whatever time of day or night it is with you, you are very welcome. My name is John Worthington. I am the CEO here at IBT Online, and I'm your host today. I have the huge pleasure of introducing today's Go Global webinar, and we're excited to be talking about building global brands online. We are passionate about our Go Global webinar series, it's all about knowledge. It's all about understanding in this so fast moving, ever changing online and international world. And it's always important to learn and try and keep up to date with what is happening so that we can build our global brands using online platforms, which are just a great example. Before we get started, on our Go Global program, we always do a little housekeeping. So today, for those of you who are returnees and know the format well, welcome back. For those of you who are new, new, just a few words on the housekeeping. Do know that this webinar is one in our Go Global webinar series. We are all about helping you grow your sales, grow your brands, and your businesses globally. Our webinar series is over three years old now, so there is a rich catalog of recorded webinars available to you, and they're all on demand, covering markets and online routes to market. If you go to www.ibt.onl backslash resources, you'll find the library there. Just go and hunt around, and I'm sure you'll find some subjects of relevance to your business and the markets that you wish to go to. We also have planned out a good number of future webinars. Again, in that same backslash resources, backslash webinars, you'll find the future planned webinars. Today's webinar, about 45 minutes long. Brief housekeeping for myself, and then I'll be handing over to Susanna for today's online brand webinar. There will be four polls, so please be ready with your mice. We love your participation. There will be time for questions at the end, so don't hesitate um, to fill in the box. As you see on your screen, just above chats and handouts, it says questions. If you click on that and then begin to send us your questions, we will answer them. There is also a chat box. Don't hesitate to use it. And also do know that there will be a brief survey at the end. So a few extra seconds of your time to tell us how we can do better in the future. And finally, do know that we're going to be sending you a copy of this webinar. The recording and slide, desk will, slide deck will be in your email inbox on Friday after it has been prepared by our back office. So now sit back, enjoy yourself some coffee or tea or even an evening drink as we begin the webinar. Let's go to the main subject. Going Global webinar series continues and I'm proud to be joined by my co-host today, Susanna Hardy, on the left of your screen. Susanna is our Chief Content Officer and so is responsible for all of IBT Online's digital media and our multi-channel publications. Susanna brings together and curates a huge wealth of international online research and knowledge, and that is made available to you on our website. So www.ibt.onl. If you go and look there, you'll find a lot of information, and Susanna is the architect of all of that. Social media channels, the IBT Online white papers, the eBooks, the infograms, the videos, and of course, webinars. And they are all dedicated to helping you grow your sales, your brands, and your business online and globally. And today's subject is a great example. Just a quick intro for Susanna. When Susanna presents, I do find that she sounds very American. And in many ways, that is because she is. Susanna, though, is half German, was born in Freiburg 
educated and worked in the US, that is over in New York, as well as in the United Kingdom, Germany and France. So she is truly a global citizen. Susanna has spent her career working in businesses internationally. She speaks German, French, Dutch and English, and she'll be using English to present today's webinar. Susanna brings her expertise in international online business development, as well as, of course, online marketing to the IBT online team, and has worked with a wide spectrum of companies, helping them grow their brands internationally. Two words on IBT online. As we get nearer the core subject and dive into brands, do know IBT.ONL, IBT Online. We're a privately held company. We're both an American corporate and a European company. IBT stands for International Business and Technologies. That technology we're talking about is, of course, online technologies. And we've been in business since 2002, helping companies. That's over 16 years. We're proud to say we've come a long way in this online world, and we're proud to say so have our clients. We're also very proud of a number of awards that we've won related to the online global program, champion of trade. To date, we've served over 400 companies and over 1,000 online global programs. Now, with that as our intro, it's time for me to stop and say, Susanna, please, let's dive to the heart of the subject. And we're looking very much forward to discussing brands, brands and brands. Susanna. John, thank you very much for that introduction, and hello, greetings to all of our exporters today. We're really excited to talk about global brands and how to develop them. Now, it's a huge topic, so we're going to try and focus a little bit on, on some subjects. I mean, brand development has never been simple, but at least in the days of TV, uh, you at least sort of, you know, make sure that you keep your name and cute little jingle in front of your enough people, and that would be sort of the end of it. Today, it's a lot more complex um, and, and, and uh, automatically more global. So we're really going to discuss brand development online. It's, a, as I said, a huge topic, so a few major points to focus on. First, we're going to have a sort of broad brushstroke view of the major tools available to all companies today, big companies, small companies, medium sized companies. If you're exporting, use online tools to get your brand uh, out there. Then um, after that, we'll talk about the responsibility or ownership of a brand. So what it really means to, to say to take ownership and to be responsible for a brand. Um, and what does that imply for your obligations? Then we'll talk about engagement. How do you foster, nurture, and shape your online brand globally? And finally, a quick review of some case studies. So a lot to talk about. Uh, and uh, I look forward also to your questions at the end. So just starting then on online tools for exporters to use to develop their brands. Just to, um, here in front of you, you should have uh, um, sort of these, these, these big slides that Hootsuite uh, produce annually. They're, they're a fantastic resource for, for people working um, online internationally. And here you can see their latest one in January, which shows that out of the nearly 7.6 billion out of us in the, in the, in the, in the globe, over 50%, 55% are online. So that's really, you know, quite something in terms of, you know, 53% are online. Out of that, 3 billion are using social media. So this is really just a, 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 a you know, a, a, good, a good slide to show you how huge and how online all the world is. So if you think that you're sitting there in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a city, but it's a US city or a European city that you're you know, online all the time, guess what, you're not alone. Um, so you know, it, a lot of this, by the way, is driven by the mobile phone industry. Two thirds of the world's seven and a half billion people have mobile phones. Uh, and, and over half of those are smartphones. So there you go. So it's really a very, very internet focused world today. It's also a hugely social media world. Nearly one million new social media users every day. How about that? That's a good factoid for you. So um, then I wanted also to say, this is sort of our mantra on this and something I think you heard John say in the beginning, you know, uh, using online tools to grow sales of brands and businesses um, with you know, localization, with international online marketing and such. And I think it's really important how we see that as for, for small cap companies, for mid-size and for global companies, um, all, all being able to use these online tools. 
And I guess the key, one of the key things we would look at first is an understanding of the search engines that drive the internet and how you, with the understanding of it and the knowledge or some knowledge of how these search engines work, you can better access global markets. So the first one I want to talk about just very briefly was, 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 was Google. And I think it's important to know that search engines like Google and the other ones are localized. In other words, Google in the States is different. Is a different Google from Google in the UK. They might have the same language, they're both in English, but they're different Googles. They reply in different ways. And, and why is this really? It's because what search engines do is to structure the internet from the point of view of the person searching. So they have two main functions. The first is to build an index and provide search and search users with a ranked list of the websites that the search engine thinks are, are relevant. And then they, uh, they want to say that one is the most relevant for you. That one, they'll rank them. So they provide first a, 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 a list and then they rank that list. They'll go through billions of documents and information, not just documents, but JPEGs, everything. So to turn those results first into something relevant and useful to the searcher's query, and then to rank them in terms of popularity. So therefore, optimizing your website for a search engine means trying to influence both the relevance and the popularity of your company and your brand in the market. And if it works for one market, it doesn't mean it works for another market. You have to think of Google. Google is present in about 192 countries. You have to think of them as 192 different Googles. Um, um, you know, there, there are obviously great similarities, but they're basically different Googles. Um, here's a map that shows you the, the most dominant uh, website in each country. And you can see the huge spread and domination of Google. I mean, worldwide, it has about a 75% market share in terms of search engines. Uh, the big two exceptions uh, is Russia, where the local Russian search engine Yandex has about a 60% market share, and in China, uh, where Google has about a 2% market share, and its led, its led market leader is Beidou, uh, with a 76% market share. There are also whole areas of the world, notably Africa, but also a lot in Central and Latin America, where Facebook is the single most popular um, um, website, and Facebook essentially acts like a, a search engine in those markets. And I think that's also worth considering and worth remembering when you're looking at online brand development here. Um, I think it's, 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 there's a couple of little other little stats that you might want to just think about at the moment, uh, certainly in terms of mobile versus fixed computers. Uh, I think that Google announced a couple of years ago already that more searches are now taking place on mobile than on computers. And in at least 10 of the largest countries that they have, including the US and Japan now. So there are more searches on mobile than on, on um, fixed lines. And again, that's important when you're looking at your, at your uh, brand development. So when you're looking at, at different countries, how do you make sure that you're look, that you're, you're, you really search for in the right way? Um, one of them is just keywords and the right keywords. Now, this is something we talk a lot about, and, and we've done webinars on them itself. But uh, I want to just give you one example. Um, this is an example of, of, of um, if you have a Portuguese or a Brazilian website. Um, in, there, there are two words to say the word train in Portuguese, either trem or comboi. And about 95% or 98% of people in Portugal say comboi. But, and if you were to use that on your website, you would have about only about 5% of people searching using that term. So it's the same language. It's a different Google. That's a different Google algorithm, a different Google search site. Um, another example of this, again, between, say, the UK and the US, I just got a colleague of mine to, to, to look up red shoes. And she sits in Miami, Florida. I said, google.com, red shoes. And she got the, the display you see there on the left. And if I'm sitting in the UK, in London, I go google.co.uk, 
red shoes, I get a very different list of, of, uh, of, of stores and of, of, um, of results and ranking from, um, from the google.co.uk. So I wanted to give you these examples just really to highlight what we call website localization. And this is key to the understanding of how to develop brands. So it might come down as a rather long introduction, but without an understanding of website localization, it is very hard to understand how you can really uh, uh, develop global brands. Because it turns out that global brands is really about developing lots of strong, localized brands in all your, 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 your international markets. I've listed there on the right-hand side the key elements that we uh, regard as, as, as uh, features of a localized website. You can see that uh, translation in, is just one of them. Now, fully adapted to local language is just one out of 10 elements that we would regard as key to having a localized website. Remember my example there about the, the, the train in both Portuguese and Brazilian um, uh, Portuguese. It's about getting the right words, but also about the images, about the hosting, about the infrastructure that it sits on, the content management system, registered domain names, and so on. So there's a lot to take into account when you're looking at mobile uh, about uh, website localization, uh, but as I said, it is really the fundamentals of um, of a uh, of a global brand and developing a global brand. Susanna, thank you for that. I'm looking at it and saying, hey, it's time for the first poll. So please, everybody, lean in, um, reach for your mice, share with us as I launch this first poll. This first poll is absolutely relevant to what Susanna was to talking about in terms of those localized websites and that best practice for having a localized website. What are you doing? Um, is it yes, are you in your main markets? Yes, only a few, or are you thinking about it? I'm going to give you feedback because we're collecting responses right now. 60% are saying they're thinking about it. 40% are saying yes and but a few, and 10% are saying in all of their main markets. So th thank you. Bravo to the 10% because you're really out there. Your brand is in your main export markets. Your local users online can find you and engage with you. Bravo. Uh, for those of you in a few, well done. And those thinking about it, I hope today will be a helpful day to um, help you understand the issues and the challenges and the importance of being having your brand localized market by market. I'm closing this first poll. Thank you. Susanna, back to you. Thank you very much. Those are, those are interesting results. And here we're going to turn now to our next main feature, which is really just going to talk about global brand responsibility. And I, I, I hesitated a little bit. What to say is an ownership responsibility, and it really does come down to responsibility, what it means to own, manage, nurture a global brand. And how we, 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 we sort of see this really is in a way your websites, your online presence, we equate that to being a, like a person. It's your, it's your main ambassador <coughs> in the online world. So that your brand, your reputation is all something that is hosted and displayed and showcased via your localized websites. So you need to have these localized websites which can build credibility and trust in the local markets. And that's why we, we, you know, we, we put up here on the right hand side those lists of, of things that we regard as key to brand development. For example, the, 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 the builds awareness, this credibility, this trust, uh, that the, the value of the brand comes through that it is well that there is an element of protection and, and then security, and I guess what, it re what we'd like to focus on most particularly today are the three elements about owning your own websites internationally, making sure that those websites are trustworthy, not just secure but are valid and legitimate, and that you engage in those websites. 
so that there is a use for those websites. It's no use because building them and having them out there and not engaging in the outside world, in the online world, uh, to build your 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 um, uh, glo global brand. And our point again, once again, is that it's the culmination, and it's the it's the consolidation of all of these local strong brand developments that finally leads to a global brand. So the first topic we're going to talk about then is really just about owning your website. And here, this is really about, you know, it's just, it can also be just a technically, uh, it's just about here, uh, um, uh, domain names. And there's a thing called a top level domain name, a TLD. And there's lots of different types of domain names. Now, for example, in the US, you can have .com, .com, .us, and so on. So there's a lot of different kinds of them. But you should know that if you want to have global websites and different kinds and different ones, you could have different uh, top-level domain names um, for that. Now, let's put it this way. If you, if, you, know, you wouldn't allow a competitor to use your logo, let's say. So equally, we regard it as bad practice to allow any of your international domains for your export markets to be used by someone else. We think that it's a good thing that you own your international domains. And even if you're just dipping your toes into new export markets, one day your export markets, you know, customer base might be big enough that you say, this is really important now. You know, there's a, uh, you know, we, we need to own this. Um, uh, we have seen cases where local domains have been registered by competitors, next distributors, or other partners. And then it's a question of having to buy them back. And that can be very expensive. There are basically really only two reasons why you would buy a top level domain. The first is because you want to develop that brand. You want to develop the brand and identify target customers and sell them things. And the other reason is that you want to sell that domain name to someone at some point. So um, it's difficult, costly, expensive to buy domain names from someone else uh, if they already bought it from someone. So there's, um, you know, the, the main domain names out there at the moment, there's, there's lots of them. Our recommendation is go and make sure that you own your top ones. Your very most, you know, they're, they're the ones that focus on your priority markets. Start with these, buy them. It's difficult to, enough to say, okay, we're not going to buy them all, but you know, pick your priority markets and get a hold of those ones. Just go out and grab those top level domain names wherever you might have a subsidiary or might be headquartered or where you're intending to do business. Um, uh, there is some cost, there's financial uh, registration, hosting costs, um, but uh, um, it's certainly worth it in the, in, the, in, the, in the long term. I wanted to give you two examples uh, as well of, of how you can sort of look at this um, in a more sort of proactive way. Here we have Europe uh, on the left-hand side and some South America op um, opportunities on the right-hand side. In Europe, the EU requirements for domain registration are managed by each individual country. They're managed individually, and they, there's quite a lot of variation between countries. Some countries allow you to register. Some countries say you have to provide local details like addresses or corporate tax name numbers, so it can be a little bit trickier. Um, uh, at the moment, Google doesn't actually recognize the .eu for search engine, but the way to get around that is to do uh, forms of subdomains. I've given you two examples there the, for France, uh, fr.companyname.eu or companyname.eu backslash fr. Those would be fine for, for Google search engines and they would secure your domain name. So that is a question of owning your brand, your brand name and logo online. Um, Latin America is kind of interesting and, and fun because um, if you, you could either say, well, you know, Mexico is big enough, we need that Mexico one. But what about, what about my prospects in all the other countries? Maybe, maybe I don't have quite as much business in some of those other ones. I could always do a dot L A T. And that is good for all of Latin America with the exception of Brazil, which is BR. So there you go. That's also a solution for, uh, for um, uh, Latin America that we see frequently. So a dot .lat, company name dot .lat, Argen AR is for Argentina, uh, for example, um, or, or, or CO is for Colombia. 
So that's also a, a good handy way of, of making sure that you can really spread your brand online um, uh, over many different types of markets. Susanna, thank you for that. It's time for poll number two, and you can see the importance attached to these TLDs, these top level domains. Please, as one of the takeaways today, do think about your own domain names. They have huge value for your brand internationally. I'm launching today's poll number two, which is do you own your brand domain names in your export markets? Please do think about it. If you do, bravo to you for all of them. Um, bravo if it's some of them. Do think about it. The value attributed to domain names. If you ask companies like at the top of the pile, should we say the Amazons, look how much they're paying for their domain names and the value that they attach to that brand. So please be aware of it. Let me give you some feedback. Um, 7% are saying that they own them all, and that is well done you. It's an investment in the future. It's an investment in your brand. 38% are saying yes, but only in a few. Uh, 35 are saying that they're thinking about it, and 20% are saying they don't know. Please, those of you who are don't know, uh, do check out your brand domain names. They have huge value, and they will have increasing value in this in growing online world. I'm closing the second poll, and I'm thanking you very much and handing back to Susanna. Thank you very much, John. Um, if you remember when we talked about the, the brands and your online persona, we mentioned also the need for credibility, trust, protection. And here, I think it's also, uh, this is very, very important when you get onto e-commerce as well. Um, and it's really worth highlighting that uh, the, the, the trust is so important in any kind of buyer experience and buyer journey. And this is particularly important, therefore, in e or m-commerce websites and brand development, but um, also for um, for any kind of brand development, you have to be you know the, the, the end client has to be able to feel that there's a trustworthiness in this uh, in this in this in this website, and that is um, demonstrated also by the security that you maintain on your own website. Uh, you know it's it's absolutely clear if you if your website has a virus has uh, is, is poorly encrypted is poorly presented. It turns people off and it says you are not trustworthy. If you have a high level of security on your website, it increases the feeling of legitimacy and trust that the, that the, um, that the other company or prospective buyer is looking at. Um, so, you know, the, the, the fact of, of, of cyber attacks today as well means that it's really becoming essential to take the security of your website um, absolutely, you know, at, at, uh, as a priority, um, particularly if you're a small or mid-sized company going on exporting, um, the small businesses appear to be particularly attacked. You know, it's, uh, it's um, even even more so than large companies. I think that's also because they're just seen as more vulnerable, and they have weaker online security issues as well. So um, again, these are not uh, conducive to building global brands with the trust and, and protection that you need. One of the key things, I think, and one of the key takeaways you can have from this is at a, a minimum, at a, at, a, at a core level, we would really recommend that you get something called security on your HTTP. Now, this is a tiny bit technical, and I'm sorry, you just get technical for just a second. But if you say that in between you and your browser and the website, that's connecting you. It's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of data and connections that can slip in that microsecond between when you look at something and click online and engage it. Um, data is permanently being transferred to you as you're uploading information, apps, and services, and, and things like that. And 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 you know all the things that you enjoy from geolocation to 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 e-commerce and payments. All of that goes on but it's about data streaming and must have a level of security. So for your, for your websites, again, I would really encourage you to make sure that you have the S, which is basically a hypertext transfer protocol, and then adding the S means it's a secure 
um, uh, link. So again, if you're looking at websites internationally, that's certainly something to look at. Make sure it's an HTTPS. And that's become increasingly important. Google has already said and has um, um, enacted upon uh, uh, discouraging companies and websites and putting a black mark against websites that do not have full security on it. So again, this is a, simply a way of saying, if you have that, that level of security on your website, it increases the buyer trust uh, and, and as well makes, makes the buyer say, okay, this is someone who cares about, who cares about online security, who cares about um, uh, my well-being, and therefore I'm going to have better credibility in terms of my brand. By the way, it also helps your, um, your Google search engine optimization and your conversion rates. So it's a, a win-win situation. Going in the same direction, we would argue that having digital compliance and having uh, websites that are fully compliant with online regulations across the world uh, are build the same level of trust and, and um, authority that you need for brand development. Now, this example here about the general data protection regulation is really specific to Europe and anyone doing business with Europe. So if you're, you know, if you're anyone, if you're a U.S. company and you have interactions with European buyers or prospects or consumers, businesses, governments, whichever, you will be affected by the GDPR. Uh, we are having a webinar on that, by the way, in the month of March. So there's that one's coming up as well. But um, it's it's that's probably at the tip of the iceberg, leading the 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 digital compliance. You know, Europe is probably at the spearhead of leading that whole compliant movement, but we're seeing it in more and more countries. And we think that this is something, you know, the whole digital compliance is something that will come increasingly um, across markets um, as, as the years go by uh, with this big, big deadline coming up this year for Europe. Now, as I said, digital compliance, just like security and encryption, and um, um, anti-pirating, anti-hacking uh, aspects of your of your internet web persona is important for the buyer's journey, important for the brand development, for those attributes which we listed in the beginning of um, credibility, trust, protection, and value. Now, after after this section, I'm really going to turn to, to John and talk about the last one we talked about as well, the last big heading, engagement. But before we do so, John, we have time for one more poll. We do indeed. Thank you very much indeed. This is poll number three and absolutely, again, relevant. So I'm launching it. Please grab your mice, participate. Does your online presence bring your brand, that awareness, credibility and trust internationally? So do local users in these target markets, do they get your brand? Are they aware of it? Is your brand credible and is it trusted? So we're asking, is it yes in all markets, in the main markets? Are you thinking about it? No need to address that. So let me give you some feedback. Um, from the top, 30%, 35% are saying yes in all of your main markets. So again, well done. Yes in the main markets is uh, 35% again. 14% are thinking about it. Nobody, 7% oh, now say they need to address it and 7% say they don't know. So, well, there you go. As you're thinking about your brand, as you're imagining your brand out there about awareness, your brand's credibility and trust, think of it in the online context, that local online presence. So, well done to those of you who are out there and down the road. Those of you who are thinking about it, I hope today's webinar will help you in that process. I'm closing this particular uh, particular poll and we're going to talk about engagement. Um, Susanna, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be talking a few minutes all about engagement and what an amazingly online and engaged world it is. Um, in the first slide, we're going to be talking all about how the world has changed. Now, some of you might remember the old world on the left there yesterday and all of us live in today's world on the right. It is a paradigm shift. The world has changed. Um, it is no longer binary of that relationship, which used to be one-to-one -one relationship between a company and its clients. 
and it could manage that brand management relationship, shall we say, and push that brand to customers, push that brand to partners, or push that brand out to clients and, and competitors. In today's world, if we envisage that and look at it on the right, it's all very, very integrated. You have to know that today's direct social media communications have changed all brand management models. In this customer-centric online world, your target consumers and those businesses that you want to communicate and get your brand across, well, they're all online and they're able to go and search and gather information directly about your brand, about your products, about your services. So in today's world, a potential buyer will go check you out and if he's not satisfied and he does not trust your brand, guess what? He'll go away. So this is an extraordinary shift. Now, there are two ways to look at this. It's either a huge opportunity. And we'd say to you, if you're a small, mid-sized business out there, this is a paradigm shift. It's a great opportunity to you. You do not need the resources of the brand management billions of yesterday's multi-billion multi dollar corporations. The social media brand globalization model completely changes the way you can get out there and communicate. So it's all very exciting and represents huge opportunities. And if we look at the world map of social networks, we can see that 3.2 billion people are using social media across these networks around the world. Well, there you go. There's a map of the world. There's 3.2 billion people. Let's think about the American population. What is that? So, so give or take 300 million. If you think about the European population, give or take 500 million. Well, that still leaves us with a couple of billion and a few extra hundred million people outside the US and outside Europe. And they're all on social media networks. Social media platforms are in today's world the great way for companies to communicate their brands internationally and to reach potential clients all over the world. It is a social media network brand management world. The main benefit of using social media for brand management is just simply to get your brand out there. So customers in international markets can buy your products and services, be aware of your brand, trust your brand, engage your brand, and value your brand. So the social media networks have changed the game, and there's a little bit of a mapping from Jan 2018 to give you some indication of, of some of the platforms that you should be looking at, understanding and knowing for your particular brand. Uh, if you look at it from another perspective, on a country perspective, visitors to the top social platforms by country. Well, you can dive into all of this stuff. There's material out there for you to go and research and pull together. If you want to come to our own website, ibt.onl, there is a wealth of information curated by Susanna there, all about the top social media platforms by country. This is how the great paradigm shift has happened and engaging in different countries in different social media platforms. So it is important to know which platform your potential clients, your target markets are on and choose your brand communication platform country by country. Now, Germany is a little interesting example. It's a very important market there out there in the world. It's a mature, huge market, 90% internet penetration in, in, in Germany. But my guess is that if your marketing campaign is on Twitter, you'll see that you're not going to get that uptake that you want. By contrast, take a good deep look at the way Facebook is used in Germany and your brand could have a very different engagement experience. So there you go. Do look at the platforms and look at the platforms on a country by country basis. We want to throw in a wild card here. We thought about doing a poll asking how many of you out there are on WeChat. Um, personally at IBT Online, we embrace WeChat because it is a monster. It is sort of the platform of all platforms. It's the ring that binds them all. Um, WeChat is in a way showing where social media networks in some other European and American markets will probably go. With 963 million monthly active users, it's a monster that dominates the Chinese market. The key thing that you need to know about if you're thinking about brand management in China is that the Western social media platforms, i.e. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, well, guess what? They're not there. They're banned. 
So look at the Chinese social media platforms. Think of WeChat and Weibo. Now, Weibo is a very interesting microblogging platform. It's sort of a combination of Twitter and Facebook, but the real one you want to have a good deep dive into is WeChat. And certainly we are WeChat fans. Um, WeChat has some very interesting opportunities for your brand. Tencent launched a program to bypass the licensing of brands so that you can open up on WeChat. So I would encourage you to have a look at it. If you're interested in China, think WeChat and go and have a look at it. By the way, we do have a webinar, guess what, selling online in China, which will, of course, take a deep dive into WeChat. And that is in March, on March the 21st. So stay tuned for that. The big social media platform that we all love or love to hate, Facebook. 101 languages. There you go. Did you know that? Facebook is available in 101 languages. But Facebook isn't only Facebook. Guess what? Facebook is probably a monopoly out there and should be investigated, perhaps or perhaps not, with ownership of WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. You can call that a combined audience of 4.4 billion. Well, there you go. 4.4 billion. As in terms of your brand and Facebook, what are you doing today online vis-a-vis -vis Facebook and vis-a-vis -vis your brand? And what are you doing online vis-a-vis -vis Facebook and vis-a-vis -vis your brand and using the international platform that Facebook presents for you today? Many successful brands are out there and they're building their recognition, their trust, their engagement, the authority that they need for their brand on Facebook's world famous and wide world 4.4 billion platform. Now let's have a look at a few others because of course there are others. Look at Twitter. Twitter has not dodged the game. Twitter is number one in Japan and 40 languages. And well, there you go. Twitter has something of a reputation. Certain tweets are welcome. Certain tweets cause disturbance, but tweets out there are everywhere. And everybody, if you look at the Interbrand 100 companies, they're all using Twitter for their brand communication internationally. And if you walk down and look at Instagram or Pinterest, high levels of penetra penetration again for the Interbrand 100s. And again, it's all international. So we're encouraging you to think, please think of your brand. Think of your brand on a social media perspective. Think of what you're doing for your brand on these platforms internationally because these platforms are, in today's world, international. Look down the bottom, YouTube, 76 languages. How many are you using for your brand? We encourage you to think about that and we encourage you to use it. Now, uh, social media localization. So in summary, what we really want to say is be market specific, be client focused, choose your social media platform, look at your social media habits and the social media habits of the uh, your target markets. Get out there. Use the languages which in today's world you can do. In today's world you could say that it is a social media localized world and it's all about communicating your brand effectively. Successful companies today are using social media to communicate their brand worldwide. Now with that I'm just going to jump on to the fourth and final poll. So please I'd like you to join me again Come to your mice and I'm launching this poll to ask you all about do you actively use social media and marketing to promote your brand? Are you out there doing it domestically and in all of the main markets? Are you doing it domestically and in a few? Are you doing it domestically but not internationally or thinking about it? So let me give you feedback from your cohorts and your colleagues who are joining us today and sharing this webinar with us. Let me give you the first big number. 50% are saying they're doing it domestically, but not internationally. That is a very interesting number. Well, well done to you doing it domestically. We'd encourage you to think about how cost effectively you could deploy your domestic social media across international channels. Many companies are doing it. I'm sure you can too. I'll give you the top numbers. They're 13% are saying, yes, they're doing it in all of their main export markets. 5% in a few. 7% are thinking about it. And 20% are saying no. Well, for the 20%, please 
Today, I hope we're going to give you enough takeaways, enough encouragement, enough help to help you use social media and marketing to promote your brand both domestically and internationally as you can do today. Susanna, that's closing poll number four as I hand back to you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to just, uh, just, just steamroll ahead because I want to leave a little bit of time for uh, some questions. I hope there's some questions coming in. Um, just a quick review of some of the case studies, which I hope will, will um, sort of fire your imagination. But before that, I want to just to get us back onto the core message of brands. And I thought basically my way of doing it is to say, you know, a, a website can also be seen as like a, 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 a battleship, you know, going off to, to these markets, launching different objectives. And you can have different objectives and multiple objectives running along at the, very, at the same time, or you can prioritize different objectives at different times. Um, whether it's, you know, the trust and experience or the awareness, uh, you know, awareness and credibility. You could do campaigns through social media um, about for the awareness, of, and, and I'll give you an example of that. Um, but, but the key message really is that the online value is a, a collection of the, uh, an accumulation of the local embedded value that's seen, the local websites, the local online personas which equate to a global brand. So you achieve that global brand status by having multiple local strong cultures and strongly embedded websites. Um, so these are some examples of, 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 uh, of how to grow brands using online social media and international marketing with localized websites. Now, the first one I wanted to show you was uh, it's a U.S. company, and they sell to um, they sell to lots of different verticals. They sell to to schools, to retailers, to um, so they sell government retailers, individuals, um, and lots and, and also to industry. And uh, the top is an is an example of um, uh, their U.K. site where they launched a campaign ahead of, um, ahead of Valentine's Day to really push uh, uh, awareness and build, uh, build social awareness, build, build, build uh, product and brand awareness. And this was done through their website and through Facebook, Facebook uh, and LinkedIn um, campaigns. And um, on the bottom is just a, a snapshot, a screenshot of their German uh, one and the German one is much more. The German website tends to be much more um, content rich, uh, perhaps less, uh, you know, more, more, more blogs, more white papers and things, because it is more con uh, conducive in the German market. That's what their Germans are expecting it now. But they now have websites in many, many different markets, and they're able to. Uh, pursue different campaigns at different times depending upon the needs of that market whether they're just entering a new market then it's all about brand awareness whether it's uh, a market that is more established for them then they're going to talk about sort of uh, the, the the engagement they want to drive up leads um, or if it's a, again sort of a more new market then they're going to try and drive up the, the trust and experience aspect of, of the uh, of their of their for their brand. Next on my list is I wanted to highlight a company which is doing an awful lot of online marketing in different markets. And they, again, they do it in different ways. This is an example of lead generation and brand awareness via online marketing to a website. So you put something on a Facebook. In this case, it is a, um, it's a, uh, a competition. Um, you'll have to know that this company sells to motorbikes motorbike distributors and they are generating leads for the distributors ahead of the UK bike show, the dirt bike show, which is one of the largest in the world apparently. Uh, and they launched this or we launched this competition for them. We, we hosted this for them and, and got them got them just in, in order to generate the leads for their distributors. So by putting this up there, they were able to not just push their brand ahead of this major trade show, but generate more and more awareness uh, uh, for this uh, for this brand. So this was just the very first day 
of the of the um, of the campaign, and I think within the first few hours we were getting. I think we launched it at 10:30. By 11:30 already, we're beginning to have some good shares and, and good likes on that. Again, another one of our clients where we're this is more an e-commerce site, and here it's all about making sure that you have very secure payment, you have an absolutely clear and easily understood website. And they are servicing um, much. In, in this case, this is the Spanish um, website that there that I've shown you, and it's about um, uh, uh, making sure that the prospective client can trust their brand, has a deep respect for it. They are selling to large global players, so they're selling to tier one and OEMs. They need to make sure that their brand is absolutely without question and trustworthy and easy to see and secure. So there they have a, a very strong e-commerce platform that we've built for them and um, a very strong um, uh, multi with multiple sectors and easy to see uh, website uh, which is fully localized into into this into this particular market that I've shown you. So this was something that we've been working with them for a while on and and, and is and has really helped their brand awareness. Uh, in the Spanish market in particular. So I just wanted to give you those three quick um, quick uh, uh, case studies, and I hope I've left a little bit of time for some questions. If any questions have come in, John, Susanna, is there any questions at all? Indeed, Susanna, there are a bunch. And please uh, do know we will take your questions. We will look at the questions and respond after if we don't respond to them now. I'm going to just take a few. Um, let's take this one, Tony from the US. I'm looking at Tony's question. How do I make sure your international distributors um, follow our brand guidelines? So I think what that is, is um, it's a US company. How do I make sure our international distributors follow our brand guidelines? So it's all about brand guidelines and international distributors. Yeah, this is this is something we see regularly and, we, and, and, and really try and help about this whole online reputation management. It's really important to have very well-defined brand guidelines, particularly when you start going in international markets, um, uh, uh, but even for your local domestic distributors. But when you start going uh, international markets across language barriers and so on, your brand guidelines have to be crystal clear, easily accessible for your distributors, easily managed and regularly reviewed. We actually put the brand guidelines on some of the websites that we build on in a in a separate place for which the distributors can access so that they can refer to them easily, clearly, um, 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 easy to understand um, and without without any without any um, um, uh, difficulty at all to access either. So it's on the website uh, for the local distributors. This is very important as well if you have multiple distributors in the market, just to make sure that you have a consistency of the brand uh, being shown throughout throughout that market through with all the distributors. And this is where a local localized website can act as a reservoir for all of your marketing material and all of the material you need to manage um, networks of distributors. It's a perfect place for it. So in order to build that awareness and experience and trust protection, all those, those attributes that we talked about, um, we would say build strong, easy to understand, easy to access, regularly reviewed brand guidelines and make them easily accessible to all of your distributors. I hope that helps. Susanna, that does sound great. No, it sounds like great practical advice. I'm going to pick up one quickly from Holly here. Holly works for a UK company, says, and if I'm reading it rightly, recently had a negative online comment from a disgruntled agent in one of their main export markets. Suggestions, what do I do? Oops. Well, you know, um, it, you, the first thing you have to do is evaluate the, um, the, the effect, evaluate the damage, you know, and uh, is it as bad as, you know, Volkswagen and emission tests, or is it someone who's a bit grumpy and is saying some nasty things? In the case of the latter, it's really about online reputation management, um, and this is a, a very holistic practice, which, which you know, we, we, we encourage our clients with. And I think the most important point here is to not ignore it, but actually to engage. 
but the end objective of the engagement is to close it down. So you take the higher ground. Uh, you don't engage in the in the in the grievance so much as with the person and say, you know, sorry you feel that way. We hope we resolve your issue. End of story. Don't get involved in the issue itself. It just appears to then become increasingly a squabble. So engage with it in the local way. Don't ignore it. It will turn up in your local market and it does damage in your local market. But engage with it and close it down quickly with a taking the higher ground. I would recommend as well that you have your local partners and your other distributors or agents in that market putting other comments up there so that it becomes a well-managed process. The, the objective, as I said, is to uh, uh, take the higher ground and not engage in full discussion, but just close it down quickly online. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you, Susanna. Uh, we're glad to have Natalie. Natalie is sitting over in Paris, and Natalie says, we export via distributors. Um, they run all, all, I'm not reading this right, they run our, all our online marketing for us in those markets. I see. So we see big differences in what they do. How do we get consistency? So they've, they've got a bunch of distributors in different countries doing web work and social media work, and it's not consistent. What's a, what's a solution for that kind of problem? Well, it sort of, it sort of um, comes back, it circles back to the first question we had about brand guidelines, but there's an added element to this, which is that she's let, they're the company, Natalie's company is letting their distributors do all of their online marketing. And that's something you really have to question. It's great to get distributors involved in online marketing, but it's not necessarily their job and it's not or their expertise and it's not necessarily in your interest. They're not actually working directly for your company. They may be working for several different brands. So again, it's about ownership of your brand in your key export markets. So yes, build strong guidelines about your brand, but make sure that you own your online persona and your online space. So I would say to Natalie, look again to make sure that you own your top level domains, that you own your main websites, uh, and, and sorry, your main um, domain names in your key markets, and make sure that you're engaging directly. Um, otherwise, you're basically letting your distributor run your brand. and is that a good idea? Would you know? Do you do that in your domestic market? Do you allow someone else to take your brand and use it however they want without supervision? Not really. So uh, you know, internationally, it's not a good idea either. There are better solutions to that. Um, you know, when we're looking at our clients, we you know build a website, manage the website strategy goes hand in hand to make sure that you're optimizing the websites and building long-term value in your international global brands. Thank you. Susanna, thank you so much. I think we've got perfect timing. We've got time. This is our last question. Mary is saying, we're looking to get our brand out there and we're looking to get it online. And so actually, which markets do we start in? Um, well, some of my favorite. Um, no. <laughs> um, well, actually, we find that our clients come to us either they're the majority of our clients who come to us say, in fact, we're very strong in this market. It's now worthwhile making sure that we consolidate that, that great position. And we think actually we've got another X percent growth in that market easily. So we want to make sure that we keep what we've got and grow what we've got. We've got some fantastic distributors in this market. We want to hand them a tool. So that's typically uh, a lot of our clients come to us and say, in fact, the first markets we want to build out is our, our strongest markets. But once they have those, very often they'll take the other um, um, strategy and say, you know, there's that market over there. We're not involved in that market, but we know it's potentially huge. So the best way to do market research is, in fact, getting a website, engaging in the market before we actually set up and, and spend any you know money by building warehouses or anything else. Let's, let's build the online presence, get some good market research, and and then we'll know our strategy better in that you know important market. So very often we'll say a two-step. The first is to consolidate your main most important markets, 
particularly if you've got a great distributors, great in-market partners. You say, hey, you have such a good in-market partner, I'm going to hand you this excellent website that you know, you're going to be able to use and you're going to have more resources um, that, that at, at, your, at your disposal. And second step probably is to say, there's that fantastic huge market. We need to invest in that as a way to optimize those investments. We start with an online presence for the market research um, so that we know what we're spending. So that's probably the, the, the two-tone um, answer that I would give to Mary when she's looking to start out on this process. Susanna, thank you for that too. The other questions, please know that we will be getting back to you over the days that come. We thank you for attending today. Um, it is the top of the hour, exactly one hour. Thank you for spending the last hour with us. We hope you've enjoyed this webinar. We hope that you found lots of useful information, lots of takeaways to help you build your global brands online. So um, do know that there's going to be a quick survey now. So we would ask another sort of 15 seconds of your time and we will be sending you the recording. The slide deck will come to your email box on Friday. So watch out for that. So, Susanna, I want to say thank you for a great job done. On behalf of the audience, here you go. Susanna, yo, that was a awesome job. Thank you very much for sharing with us all of that information. To you all, we wish you a great day and success out there. Go and build your global brand and do it online, and we wish you every success. And thank you for joining us today. We look forward to webinaring again together very soon. Goodbye, and thank you.